When it comes to your Worship Keys rig, there's no ingredient more important than your computer. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to pick the right computer for your main stage or Ableton Live based Keys rig. Let's check it out. Hey guys, this is Jeremy from Sunday Sounds and I'm here to walk you through this video on choosing the best computer for a keys rig in 2020. There are many factors to consider when it comes to purchasing a Mac for a software based keys rig. So I'm going to go through each one and then at the end of the video list off two options you might consider if you're looking to buy. First, let's talk about the brain, the CPU or processor. Processors are measured by the clock speed and number of cores. To have a reliable software rig, we recommend that you have a quad core processor with a clock speed of two gigahertz or higher. You may also notice that there are different tiers or families of quad core processors, the i5, i7, and in the high end, i9. The general rule of thumb is that the higher the number, the better the processor. If you're buying new, then you should be fine with an i5 processor from the eighth and ninth generation series. If you're buying used or refurbished within the past five years, we would highly recommend going for models with an i7. Next up, let's look at RAM or memory. Most software programs list four gigs of RAM as the minimum requirement, but in our experience, this is generally not enough, especially when you start layering sounds, adding effects, or loading more patches in your concert. For a software rig, you can get by with eight gigs of RAM, but we highly recommend 16. The extra RAM will be useful if you wanna have lots of patches available or plan to use third-party plugins and sounds. If you can squeeze a little extra room in your budget, it's best spent here on upgrading from 8 to 16 gigs of RAM. Next up is storage. Keep in mind that software instrument libraries tend to take up a decent amount of space. For example, the Mainstage Factory Sound Library comes in at around 63 gigabytes. If you can, avoid computers with only 128 gigabytes of storage. It's worth it to upgrade to 256 or even 512 gigs of storage. You can always store those instrument sound libraries on an external drive if you need space. If you go that route, make sure you use a solid state drive not a hard disk drive. SSDs are much faster than traditional disk drives, and you'll need that extra speed if you want your sounds to trigger on time. The last main factor to consider is upgradability. If you're buying a Mac from 2013 and up, you aren't gonna be able to upgrade any of the above components, so you need to make sure everything is correct before you buy. Apple makes this process super easy when you buy new from the App Store, but if you're buying used from a third party, make sure you double check all the hardware specs. Some MacBook Pro models also include a dedicated graphics card. Now for most live audio applications, this is not necessary, but if you're someone who also plans to use their Mac for any video work, you might wanna consider getting a model with a dedicated graphics card. If not, then you can save some money here. Now, if you're looking to buy a computer today, we've put together two different options to consider. The first being a more affordable, but still reliable refurbished machine. And the second is a new future-proof model, but at a much higher cost. The first option comes in at just under $1,200 and checks all the boxes from above. We're looking at a 2015 MacBook Pro with a 2.8 gigahertz quad-core i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage. You end up paying a little less than the cheapest new MacBook Pro model on the App Store, but you get double the RAM and four times the storage. You can find similar models like this on the Mac of All Trades website. Mac of All Trades is a third-party reseller of refurbished Macs that has a great reputation for quality and reliability. Because they're a third-party reseller, there is no Apple warranty, but they do offer a warranty of their own on many models they sell. The second option you might consider if you're okay with spending more is the brand new 16-inch MacBook Pro. It's twice the price of the first machine, but you are getting a brand new computer, a 6-core 2.6 GHz i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of storage. It also has a dedicated graphics card, so it should be fine handling most video work. One thing you need to consider with this model is that it comes with the newest Mac OS Catalina, which at the time of this video does still have some compatibility issues with some music software and hardware. In either case, you will want to do your research to make sure all your gear and software is compatible with any machine. Now onto a few options that we would avoid buying today. The MacBook Air. Even with the recent refresh, we still don't recommend using this computer for a software keys rig as it lacks a powerful processor and they tend to only have four to eight gigs of RAM. The 2012 MacBook Pro. 
This used to be our favorite recommendation for those looking to build a budget-friendly keys rig due to its modular design, allowing the user to upgrade things like RAM and internal storage. But after eight years, the computer is finally starting to show its age. The previous year 2011 MacBook Pro models are not currently compatible with the new OS Catalina, so it's likely that the 2012 MacBook Pro will be the next added to Apple's list of vintage and obsolete products in the coming years. Now, if you already own one of these machines, then by all means, try to run MainStage on it and see what your computer is capable of. You might find that for your needs, you can get by just fine using an Air or older 2012 model. We haven't listed any Windows machines as there is just too much variation in models, brands, and specs to look at. Also, if you're using a PC, just know that you will run into some limitations for software and audio drivers. MainStage 3, the most popular key software, is only available for Macs. You can, however, run Ableton Live on Windows, and there is lots of documentation available on Ableton's site that covers this. Lastly, if you're looking for a Mac computer for your keys rig that's under $1,000, you might consider a Mac Mini. We know lots of users who go this route and have made some really cool looking Mac Mini keys rigs. You will need to factor in the cost of a keyboard, mouse, and display, as well as a creative solution to setting that up on stage, but if you already own those things, you might look into that option. If you want to hear more about a Mac Mini keys rig, let us know in the comments. I hope this video has helped answer your questions about computers and the specs needed to have a reliable software keys rig. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. Now, if you're in the middle of building your worship keys rig, maybe this is brand new to you, check out the link in the description to our full guide to building a worship keys rig in 2020. In that video, we go over not just choosing a computer, but choosing a MIDI controller, deciding which software, finding the sounds that you need. It's a comprehensive guide to setting up a worship keys rig, whether you wanna use MainStage or Ableton Live. If you need a little bit more help choosing the right computer for your context, leave a comment and let us know. And if you're a worship keys player, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next video. Thanks for watching.